as the cloud is maturing there are two focus areas which are very hot these days one is cyber security and the other one is finops some people think that cyber security and finops are mutually exclusive but that is not the case if you utilize aws services properly and do the proactive work they go hand in hand in this video i'm going to explain how you can proactively prepare for ransomware if you are using aws cloud remember aws doesn't have the ability to recover a deleted or hijacked resource it doesn't matter how quickly the event is reported to aws as a user of aws services it's your responsibility to make sure your application and the data is safe secure and resilient to ransomware where security of the aws infrastructure is responsibility of aws itself and this is part of the shared security model in this video we are going to review services offered by aws to proactively get ready for ransomware or any other disaster recovery situation getting ready for ransomware mostly revolves around having a solid backup and restore process backup and restore processes help you restore data to a point in time before the unauthorized action unauthorized action can be accidental or, or part of a security event now one thing to remember whenever you are using proactive approach to backup and restore is to keep things things simple and Sort of stupid i mean don't complicate things because when the disaster strikes there are already an urgency and panic so if your processes are simple and straightforward for restore and recovery then you will feel a lot less pain now think about what services do you normally use in aws mostly people are using ec2 which is basically a scalable computing capacity in the cloud now when you are using ec2 in the cloud then think about what exactly you need to back up and restore the first thing which comes to mind in terms of ec2 is ebs volumes ebs volumes are the primary persistent storage options for your ec2 instances and you use this block storage for different purposes so you must make sure that you are taking ebs snapshots which is a copy of your ebs volume and then you must be placing this snapshot in S3 bucket and then make it redundant across your availability zones. Another idea could be to put this S3, uh, S3 snapshot of EBS volume in a separate account in a separate region, if you can afford it, of course. Then another thing you must back up is the AMI, which is the entire EC2 instances, including its associated volumes. So you need to make sure that you are creating AMIs or Amazon machine images for your known good configurations of EC2 instances. Also make sure that you have a golden image. And so you must create a golden image of the EC2 instances by preloading needed software and configuration on the EC2 instances. So that the disaster strike when you store all of your required software configuration is already there. If you are a heavy Windows user, then think about using Amazon FSx for Windows file servers. Because the FSx for Windows provide fully managed Windows file servers backed by a fully native Windows file system. And then Amazon ensures the consistency across it. And behind the scene, it uses volume shadow copy service. Another cool service when it comes to ensuring that you have proper backups of your EC2 instance is called as EC2 Recycle Bin. It is a data recovery feature that enables you to restore Amazon EBS snapshots and EBS packed AMIs that were accidentally deleted. So I would suggest give it a read. Another resource which organization you really have in AWS Cloud is the databases. It could be your RDS databases or your Aurora databases or even some organization, organization use the Neptune, which is a graph database. Mostly I have seen that people are using either RDS or DynamoDBs. So in, when it comes to RDSs, 
make sure that you have enabled automated backups of your production databases and then enable it during your backup window. Amazon RDS creates a storage volume snapshot of your database instances and it backs up the entire database instance. For example, if you have a SQL Server instance in RDS and you have multiple databases, Amazon RDS takes a full backup of that in instance which includes those databases. And then um, you can also enable point in time recovery if your database is very, very critical. For DynamoDB table, you can enable point in time recovery. And I have another video, which I will put the link in the video description as how you can enable the DynamoDB point in time recovery. If you use point in time recovery, DynamoDB backs up your table data automatically with per second granularity to restore to any second in the preceding 35 days. Okay. Then we have something called as EFS. If you are using EFS, which is a serverless fully elastic shared file system where you can share the data among your different instances, then you should also take a snapshot of it. And then um, there is also an AWS solution called as EFS to EFS backup solution, which is basically a cloud formation template provided by AWS, which enables you to mirror the EFS volume to another EFS volume. So just search about the EFS to EFS backup solution if you want to back up your EFS volume. And then we have Amazon S3. That is an object storage service that offers industry leading scalability and data availability. S3 have different tiers, so you can configure your backups in S3 to go to a different tier or even to the glacier. Now, one of the most comprehensive and holistic backup and restore service by AWS is AWS Backup. And I'm pleasantly surprised that it has grown a lot in the last one year. It was not really up to the mark until last year and you had to use third-party tools if you wanted a serious backup and restore solution, especially when it came to the disaster recovery. But now AWS Backup has grown and evolved a lot and you can easily replace it with a third-party tooling because aws backup not only takes the backup of ec2 instance snapshot but it also supports a lot of other services for example you can take rdss backup and then um, rdss and even your s3 cbs efs open zfs document db neptune redshift time stream and then fss for luster aurora and the list goes on and on and if I remember correctly, it also backs up your cloud formation stacks. So I would highly suggest you give a good serious look to AWS Backup instead of a third-party tool as your first choice. Because by, when you're using AWS Backup, you can set your retention policies. If you have some legal control, you can put your legal control on your backs, backups. You can even control this AWS backup from your AWS organization and control tower. You can copy the backups across different accounts and regions now, which is a big, big win because earlier, most of the organization would resort to different third-party backup solutions just due to this feature because they wanted to keep their backups separate in a different controlled airtight account instead of in the same account. And now AWS backups uh, provide you that facility, but you need to use AWS CMK, the customer managed keys for it. So all in all, AWS Backup is a good service, which you should really be using if you want to have a production grade backup and restore. And one thing to mention is, it is the FinOps. Make sure that you are intelligently using these services and, en and enable them accordingly. Not every server needs a backup and then because for example if there are some servers which get deployed from pipeline and they're just application servers including code if something happens you can redeploy them from your pipeline there is no need to have a snapshot every day and then go through all the servers with your server owners and then make sure that you set the backup frequency accordingly because not every server needs the backup every hour or every day. So you can set the um, backup policy, 
backup frequency to one weekly, monthly, or whatever suits that server. I hope this was useful. If you have any comments or feedback, please put them in the comments. Thank you very much.